Thank you, Vivek. Um, it's wonderful to see you all here. I was really wondering after coming here about an hour back as to what would this subject mean in such a pavilion of display of materials and building technology, which is really uh, done to such high level of uh, exhibition display, uh, exposition, you can call it. Uh, it's just wonderful. Um, it's wonderful to see the industry, uh, leading architects, planners, um, builders, um, material manufacturers, suppliers, all of them, all of us under this huge umbrella. Uh, it's really heartening to come here. Thank you, Vivek, for uh, organizing this. And um, thank you, the IDAC organizers, for inviting me here. Um, as I said, this subject may feel, look odd, but unfortunately, the city in which we live here in Mumbai is in many ways a slum city. In many ways. One of the ways is that we have more than 60% people in terms of absolute numbers, more than 7 million people who live in slums. But more than that, even the other side of the city doesn't really mean much in terms of the environmental quality that it provides. Large parts of the city is still slum-like environment and condition of living. We might own posh houses, big apartments, but outside our doorstep are conditions of infrastructure, which is not really to the highest level, not to the level of the price that we pay for the houses that we buy in this city. So in that sense, probably I feel a bit of in place being here and speaking about the subject. Um, one of the, uh, where do I point this, to change? Oh, the lower one. Well, one of the subjects or topic that I'm really going to talk about today is a very brief one. And I'm focusing on the idea of planning. Planning for our city. This city has historically grown without planning, if I may say so. We have some fine examples of few areas of the city which have been planned under the town planning scheme. The five gardens area, for example, the Sivaji Park, for example. And you see a qualitative difference in the conditions that prevail in terms of the quality of open spaces or the ratio of open spaces to the buildable area, the kind of infrastructure in terms of schools, institutions, and other buildings that you have. So there is a very distinct difference between five town planning areas that have been developed in Mumbai versus the rest of the city. What I'm going to talk about is how can we shift from a city that has grown, that has prospered, that has been an economic hub of the country from being not being planned to a redevelopment which is through planning. <clears throat> and planning is essentially a comprehensive view of the land, the development potential, the redistribution of resources, uh, including land and infrastructure and amenities in order to make it accessible to all and in order to also make the quality of life far superior. Here's an example of what I just talked about. We as individuals, as architects, planners are doing enormous practices, running enormous practices, designing individual buildings for individual clients. Some of us are lucky to do multiple buildings for multiple clients. Some of us are struggling with one or odd building in the city. We have a huge industry which is very powerful. But this is mostly the outcome of the new development that takes place in this city. The outcome of the redevelopment and rehabilitation buildings versus the most expensive high-rise sea view buildings, all jostling with one another, yet not providing 
the kind of infrastructure and quality of life and environment that we all aspire to achieve in our lives and at least for our children and for the near and next generations so this is a fine example of just one of those slides right we have a slums we have the slums redevelopment or rehabilitation building in the foreground and we have two competing builders at the back how do we move away from this approach from single plot single appointment single mic um, microscopic view of our client of my client my site my building if we have to aspire for a city that has to be better to live in that's the challenge we have and that's the question that i'm dealing with with particular reference to slums redevelopment and how do we approach slums redevelopment away from the typical sra policy of one plot one slum redevelopment to a comprehensive view of slums across the city how can we plan for a comprehensive redevelopment of the 65 70 lakh people living in the slums and how do we integrate slums in the redevelopment schemes to the development plan of the city because ultimately these have to be integrated if the city has to look forward and ahead unfortunately we don't do that by this single plot single client microscopic viewpoint we are dividing our cities further we are barricading our cities to from exclusive gated community developments to slum redevelopment schemes where densities go up to as much as 13 1400 tenements per hectare now give you a comparison the rest of mumbai on an average lives with a density of about 300 350 tenements per hectare but through the slums redevelopment project with the singular plot approach of redevelopment we achieve a density of 13 1400 tenements per hectare now what does this mean we've gone into this game of fsi we have lost touch in what fsi has an impact on people's lives density is a better language to speak about for planning than fsi because density talks about people and numbers of people who reside on a particular plot of land not fsi i'll give you a small example you take a colony of an hig community having apartments of 1000 or 1500 square feet <clears throat> let's say we get 100 apartments in a particular land area and in the same land area if you're doing an affordable housing scheme or a slums redevelopment scheme we are achieving maybe four times that density that means in the same piece of land instead of 100 we have 400 or 500 people living now what does that mean that means the kind of burden on the infrastructure that means the need for more open space that means the need for more light more air more ventilation no more vegetation more amenities etc which we are not being prepared to provide through this process so i want to draw your attention to move away as responsible planners and architects <clears throat> as a community of architects and planners to move away from this myopic view of one plot one client one development in competition with the other to an overview of the city and how a comprehensive planning can actually achieve a better objective for city's interest and quality of life for all so that's the key point that i'm making as i said we are slummifying the city further through that approach so i am dealing with for those who are familiar with mumbai which is three subjects slums mahada land and cessed buildings in mumbai it is no joke that nearly 80% of our population live in these three areas we have close to 60% living in the slums which is close to 6.5 to 7 million people we have close to 3 million people living in the cessed buildings of mumbai who are tenants mostly in dilapidated old buildings so we got there close to um how many 100 uh, one um, 10 million people 
<clears throat> close to nine, between nine and 10 million people. And then we have the Mahada colonies, <clears throat> which had been developed as early as in the 60s, early 70s, and some of them in 50s, which is the single largest land holding agency of the government in the city of Mumbai, covering a land area of over 2000 hectares of land. In Mumbai city, in greater Mumbai, slums occupy approximately 2,400 hectares of land in the city. So put together, cess buildings occupy another 10,000. So put together, we are talking about nearly an area which is as humongous as that, that houses more than 1 million people of the city. Now in a population of 1.3 million, we are dealing with 1 million people and the settlements in the land area that is occupied by 1 million people. And how do we approach this through planning to achieve better results, not the result that we saw through SRA that I showed in the very first slide. Now, what becomes important is to build, is to evolve mapping and data. Government mapping and data has been fudged or has never been comprehensively presented and documented. So in voluntary capacity, we as an office have done for the first time mapping of the natural areas of the city of Mumbai, which is one third of the land area of the city, which covers 140 square kilometers. We've done voluntarily the first time the mapping of the open spaces of Mumbai of approximately 24 square kilometers. We've done for the first time mapping of the slums of Mumbai which is on the left of you, bringing startling information and data before us. We've for the first time done mapping of the Mahada colonies and properties. Even Mahada doesn't have a comprehensive mapping and record of its own data, which is in the middle. We, uh, that's right. And we have also the cess buildings mapping. And these are the three areas that I'm going to dwell upon very quickly with a single point. I've already gone through this. Now, if Greater Mumbai population is 12.5. That's the breakdown I have already talked to you about. Now, very quickly, I'll run through slums and Mahada just to see how through comprehensive planning, we can change the mindset and the quality of buildings and environment that we are creating in the city. That's the single objective. The single objective is move away from a single plot development basis to planning and how through planning we can actually change the view of the city and its quality of life. So we have Mumbai, the slums mapping throws up to approximately, uh, you know, 8% of the city's um, land area is occupied by the, by 60% of the population. I won't go through the details of this. Um, then what we did was we did a mapping of the slums land with the development plan of the city. And you know, the common slogan is slums have occupied all the open spaces of the city, which turned out to be a bluff. Slums, in fact, occupy on open spaces only 19% of the area. The first red line that you see, and they occupy just 0.3% of the area of natural areas. So they're actually occupying land reserved for housing, which is possible to be redeveloped. So that's the brief kind of mapping that we did. Now, this is the kind of outcome we are getting in these slums redevelopment projects. Densities of 1300 tenements per hectare, buildings that provide terrible living conditions, tuberculosis is rampant through SRA projects, lack of light, lack of privacy, health conditions are miserable. This is not the city we are aspiring to achieve as a community of architects and planners if we have to put our minds together. This is the kind of environment every slum redevelopment project, every slum redevelopment project in Mumbai is proud to illustrate after a couple of years of its construction and living here. This is the kind of environment. So we did not only mapping, we voluntarily planned, physically planned the 24 square kilometers of land occupied by the 7 million people of the city dividing Mumbai on constituency basis. There was, Mumbai has wards. Mumbai also has assembly constituencies. 
So we said, let's not displace communities and people across constituencies or wards. So we did a comprehensive planning on constituency basis. We have about 36 constituencies in the city. We documented each area. We did a zoning based ward or assembly constituency based planning, redistribution and relocation of the DP reservations in the master planning process. And you know, we then picked up each zone and detailed them out through physical planning. And we have startling results, which I will come. This is another quick example of a second zone where we detailed out. We did physical planning. So not arithmetic calculation as bureaucrats do, and they bluff us on the data and the outcome is the SRA project. So we actually did physical planning, picking up the slums land in Mumbai. And we did planning for that. We did yet another zone. We did a different zone. We did different kinds of planning. I won't go through the details of that. And we actually executed India's single largest slums rehabilitation project. We physically executed a colony for 25,000 slum dwellers who were evicted from the Burivili National Park. And we rehabilitated them at Chandivili. And this is the master plan that was prepared by us. The clients was my organization. Uh, that is Nivara Hak Suraksha Samiti, a slum dwellers housing rights movement in the city. We fought for the evicted slum dwellers right for rehabilitation. We got a court order in our favor. The government was forced to provide land and they were being otherwise demolished and thrown out. And we did a master planning, which is walkable, which is uh, comprehensive, which has schools, which has open spaces, which has everything that a town planning scheme demands. Here we are proving that through master planning of the 24 square kilometers of the slum land, through town planning principles, which are adapted for MIG and HIG colony, we can still achieve the FSI that we are talking about at a much better density level. So we did that. We executed this. We talked about pedestrianizations, markets. We did models. We had midnight meetings with the slum dwellers. Through the, we had 80,000 families being evicted. That's a population of 500,000 people. It's a city on the move. We mobilized them. We held them. The planning was open, participatory and transparent. People there are proud of the place they moved to because they participated in the planning process. We made models. We moved away from these fancy languages of presentation and boardroom conferences into sitting down in colonies and speaking in languages that they understand about architecture, about planning about density, about FSI, and all of that happened through a long struggle of the organization. And we build these houses across. We have more than 15,000 families moved in. We have more than 250 cooperative societies registered. And we have a Mahasang that manages the schools, the common infrastructures and the open spaces. So it's a very interesting experience through planning what can be achieved. And at that point in time, we had achieved a FSI of 2.5. Now, of course, the FSI has been increased. Now, with the same light, we're doing a master planning of the entire slums of the airport of Mumbai. And at one location, we're building another 25,000 houses next to Leela Hotel, where we are vacating a large, large parts of the slums of the airport. So we're doing it at three locations and clearing out 20 locations. And we're doing it through master planning that I would do if the richest clients of this country appointed me for their townships anywhere in the country for the richest the same planning ideologies and town planning principles are also adapted for slum dwellers and we and it's going into very fast uh, development now this is very interesting i'm summing up the slum section very quickly in a minute now if you really go by this fsi of four that's prevailing and we did an exercise of fsi three you know we are achieving surplus housing of 6,66,000 houses after rehabilitating 15 lakh slum dwellers, uh, tenements, right? Now, this is the kind of Accra with a density of 836 tenements per hectare with an FSI of three. All I'm saying, I argued with the government, with the chief minister then, that you don't need to raise the FSI, that we keep demanding every moment. 
we are worsening the city's conditions by mindlessly increasing the FSI. Here we are creating a surplus of 6 lakh tenements for 60 lakh population, additional population. And I'll come to the next example very quickly. And this is the summary of the slums redevelopment. We undertake integrated planning. Uh, we build off about 2,500 slum pockets in Mumbai, uh, integrated rehab and sale buildings. And you know what is interesting in the last chart, buildings don't have to be taller than ground and seven stories. We consume the FSI, achieve a density effect in ground and seven to eight storied buildings. We don't have to build 30 storied buildings as we are doing today. They're far better, more economical, more maintainable with open spaces and amenities that are required as per town planning principles. This is a physical demonstration through physical planning. It's not an arithmetic hisab. So we do that, provide rehab units, sale units, achieve densities, permit TDR between slums because there are unequal slums. Some are dense, some are less dense. So you allow, you create, SRA administers that, that's their job. So you empty a slum's density to the neighboring slum, etc., for redistribution of densities. Now we did for the first time Mahada redevelopment. And we're launching the first project under this mapping of 140 acres of land called Motilal Nagar in Goregaon. And now Mahada has adapted this principle for all the colonies redevelopment of Mahada, covering approximately 2000 hectares of land. And we documented every mo uh, colony of Mahada. We prepared the map of Mahada properties and we demonstrated through comprehensive planning away from these individual builders getting into doing little, little pockets into horrible slums for the future that you can actually achieve a much better harmony and planning and living quality and standards. So I'll run through that. Now, in this effort, we are achieving phenomenal numbers. We don't have that many people in the city. If I put the surplus housing created through SRA and the surplus housing I'm creating through Mahada Properties Redevelopment, I have to invite people coming into Mumbai to live and occupy those houses. So which is which is phenomenal. I can't do that. So and then you have a comparative of all the three, uh, the CES building, the Mahada and the slums. And I'll show you I'm running short of time. But look at this. Um, the deficit, the government says there's a deficit of approximately 10 lakh affordable housing units in the city. I think this is one of my last slides, uh, Vivek. Um, and through slums redevelopment, I'm getting 6.7 lakh units. Through Mahada redevelopment, I'm getting about 3 lakh units. Put together, I'm getting about 10 lakh surplus units by just redeveloping government owned land in the city through master planning, through proper planning. That's the point I want to make. And all of us have to strive as architects, planners, professionals in this city to come together to impose upon government a thought. Let's break away from these individual plot, individual patron, individual client, drive that we are all into this poison through that drive. Get out of that to build a better city for our people, our children, and for the future that is much more sustainable. Thank you. I think I'll end with that.